Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Today, I'm going to ask a philosophical question. Can a ship's refrigeration system last 30 years? Why is that a philosophical question? Well, this is the refrigerator that came out of Temptress. It has a little problem and we're going to work on it. And I just realized that the part that has a problem today is the last part that I have never replaced. Okay, refrigeration, like anything else, is a collection of parts. When you understand how it works, it's always worth fixing and not replacing, because replacing is just starting with new, untested parts. This started as an Adler Barber, I believe, about 30 years ago. And over the years, I've replaced every single component except for the condenser. Well, the condenser seems to have outlived its life. Um, it is getting a little corroded and there's a little pinhole leak and there's obviously no way to fix it. And it's not like this was untouched over the years. I, I've built this plate to make it more efficiently pull air through it. I've done a lot to it, but I'm gonna retire this component. What we have beyond that is a base plate that I slapped together out of some scrapped uh, stainless steel because the original one was done with regular steel and it rusted. I have changed out the compressor. Um, this is so old that it was an, in, um, an induction motor type AC compressor way back when we used those things. They didn't last very long and they used a tremendous amount of power. So I bought a, uh, at the time, Danfoss BD50 as a spare. I went off sailing, I got down to Puerto Vallarta and it packed up. I put this in and suddenly I was using half the power. So I say uh, Temptress is the first boat to have these new compressors. This was long before Isotherm and all those companies started putting them in. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, a, a changed compressor and actually I changed it again in the last, um, that would have been like 24 years um, that, that, that that one failed. So this is new to that. This says isotherm, that just means that the electronics component came out of somebody that had a broken refrigerator and I grabbed that. And honestly, that's how I normally do things. People ask me to help with the fridge, take it apart, uh, replace the parts from some inventory I've got. Sometimes when it's a bit of a basket case or they have other components they'd rather put in, I take the old ones out. If they're still serviceable, I keep them around. Um, so this is definitely Frankenstein's refrigerator and that's kind of how I like it. It's kind of neat. Uh, let's see, what do we have also? The, I'll, I'll put a little bit of footage in, but long ago I thought that the biggest evaporator I could find, those aluminum things everybody uses, pressed uh, two pieces of aluminum with little tracks in them, I feel it wasn't big enough. I wanted a, a, a bigger three cubic foot freezer in my refrigerator freezer. So I, I just had to build my own. I couldn't find any other practical way to do it. So I built a box out of copper and then uh, soldered copper tubing onto it. And that's my evaporator. So that's replaced. Um, like I said, the control unit's replaced. And today we are gonna replace this old um, heat exchanger condenser with this one I just bought. This one's smaller in area, but it's a four row condenser where this is only a two row condenser. So it's actually got a little bit more oomph to it. And it's a little easier to get all of the fan to go across all of the fins. So I chose this one. I'm going to attach that and set that up. Let's see. This is gonna come off. I just have it sitting there right now. So it looked like a compressor. I cut that off, cutting this off. This is the filter dryer, the high pressure access port, and how I connect to the high pressure side of the evaporator. We'll put that back on. We're gonna add one more thing. I've had these on before and I've taken them off. Um, in finding this leak, I thought it was the old one of these and I kind of want to change out anyway. This is a water um, based condenser and I'm going to run both this and the air base condenser. So it'll, the final product will kind of look like this. Um, this is actually the titanium condenser that I use in the air conditioners. Um, 
me tell you a little side story about that. We've got a guy that's starting that company up again, and there's going to be two products pretty soon. Uh, one is the box of parts to do the kit type that you've seen in my videos, what we're running in the aft cabin of Temptress. And that's real good if you're the DIY type. But we're also making one based on, well, quite honestly, this, uh, uh, this component and this component, and a, but a very fancy compressor that works for air conditioning and really efficient and all. And it'll be really quite small. Uh, we don't know the dimensions exactly yet, but really quite small. Like, should be able to fit underneath a drawer in most sailboats, and you would bring uh, salt water to and away from it. You'll bring electricity to it, and you'll have two three-inch ducts that you run to the area you're going to uh, refrigerate, and it'll dry and, you know, do all those things. Anyway, look for that. Um, if you want to get on the mailing list, go back to one of the air conditioner videos I've done in the past, and you'll see a survey form. Fill that out and give your email, and he'll send you an email when he's ready, when he's got news. Back to this. Okay, the first real step, I guess, is physically getting it hooked together. So I'm gonna take this outside because I don't wanna drill in here and have metal filings everywhere. And I'm just gonna drill and bolt this down uh, basically right there. So I'll get back when I'm done with that. Okay, well that's attached where I want it now. Tight enough for what it's needed. Um, while I was out there, I remembered the philosophy, at least the name of it, Ship of Theseus. That's the deal where they replaced every single nail, every single board of the ship, and at the end is the same ship. This is the refrigerator of Theseus, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna start up, um, probably time lapse through all this unless I have something to say. Um, as I go, I'll probably have some ideas. You might like this video. It's kind of like just watching me do a project. I've been asked so much for that. Honestly, I don't know if I would watch this video, but I've been asked, so I'm going to do this. I promise for you that don't like just watching someone else work. Um, along the way, I will likely have some ideas, and I will express them, and might have your understanding of refrigeration get a little better. Uh, seems some of my other videos have that kind of thing in them, and I'll take my best shot. Let's see, first off, the condenser. This one can move more heat. It has more rows, kind of more surface area. That means for the same amount of air blowing over it, it should be just a bit more efficient. Uh, how the whole system works, I got a whole series of videos on this in depth, but just to retouch, this is the compressor, and it takes the low-pressure gas that leaves the fridge and compresses it into a high-pressure gas. Very high, and very hot, because when you compress things, they get hot. And that hot gas will go through these two condensers, and whichever one can do the job first will cool it into a liquid. And the pressure of the high-pressure system is kind of defined by the temperature it takes to cool it into a liquid. So the more effective we are at moving the heat away, the lower the final temperature kind of is, and the, the lower the final pressure is. And with the uh, two of those being lower, we're going to have less work for the compressor to do, because it's going to have to pump until condensation happens. So. We put them together, uh, then the, the gas leaves that. That's where it's gonna go through that filter dryer guy. Here it is. And then that attaches to the evaporator. The evaporator is connected with flare fittings. I like flare fittings for this. Um, with that little dope I put on them, they never seem to leak. And then I can open it without unsoldering and resoldering. Also, um, sometimes when you're looking for a leak, if you have quarter flare fittings, you can put your gauge set right on them. And like, for example, when I'm done with this, I will pressurize this part of the system and make sure it's not leaking before I attach it to the rest. Anyway, that's always worked for me. I'm trying to get this little fitting open. It came from China. It's a perfectly nice flare fitting. This guy uses a quarter flare here. And of course, because I'm doing it on camera, it's like four times harder than normal. Well, I got a bunch of these. I'll go get a new one. I think I'll tie everything down a little bit with some wire ties before I 
start cutting too much tubing. Real simple stuff here. That's pretty good. That'll keep it from flying away while I hook things up. Let's see if we can get this one off. This is uh, 3 8 I'm gonna do this all with quarter, so I'm gonna have to reduce down. So I'm just gonna cut the end cap off this. Use the same little stub they've given me and uh, go to town. If you hook one of these up, you're gonna be asking yourself, like what is the inside and what is the, oh, let's first talk about the water condenser here. Uh, the water goes through an inner tube and then there's this outer tube that's welded on. It's all made out of titanium, which is kind of cool. And according to the manufacturer, the inner tube has been like twisted in a way so that there's fins, you know, kind of um, that cause turbulence both in the water and in the gas passage. So which way would you hook it up? Well, um, I think by rights you would want the gas to be the big hose and the liquid to be the smaller tubing because, you know, liquids are. But this is plenty oversized. That's way bigger than it needs to be. Um, so I'm going to treat them both as quarter inch anyway. So the way that it just liked to mount here, put this one up higher than this one. So I'm going to have the gas come in on the high side, let it go around and out the low side. And that way, as it's condensing, water liquids being what they are, they can flow downhill and be picked up. Where the, the gas, if it's not condensed yet, will have just a little more time floating on the surface. And the same here with the air to uh, gas uh, uh, condenser. I'll have the product come in on the top and then go back and forth and back and forth. And then the final liquid will be coming out the bottom. So by the time something falls all the way to the bottom, we're going to be pretty sure it's got into liquid state if it can. Almost forgot to put a little of this sealant on here. Nylog blue, this is called. Um, like I've said before, kind of don't know if it works because I use it all the time, but it's, um, safe for this refrigerant and I haven't had much of a leak problem so I say that it probably works but it definitely is great for keeping tigers away because I haven't had any tigers on the boat since I've used it and that's about the level of my uh, trust really but I own it so I might as well use it And actually, in all honesty, I had a, a leaking valve. Um, I had a leaking fitting once and I couldn't tighten it up enough. And I took it apart and I put some of this stuff in there and life got better and stayed better. So, so it's probably worth it because this is, it's like what, $6 for a tube of stuff like that. And you get to use it for the rest of your life. And hassle is just not worth six dollars. So, start cutting some uh, copper. Refrigeration uh, copper, you find this in any hardware store. It's used for lots of stuff, so whether you're doing refrigeration or not, it's available. Just check that. Yep, good. When you work with copper, it's soft. And uh, you want to keep it soft. So the more you bend it, 
the more likely, well, the more it will get what's called work hardened. So don't just bend it a lot. It'll get hard, brittle, and crack. But if you treat it gently and just make your bends the way you know you want them, it's quite malleable and you could do a lot with it. If it ever does get hard and you can't work it anymore, you should look it up, but you get your torch and you heat it up quite hot till it has a little glow to it, I guess. Um, I don't know, I just do it. But uh, then let it cool down and that will um, soften it up again, as it were. I think I'm gonna go under with this. So it's gonna go to about here. Would have been easier had I done this before I uh, put this fitting together. Well, just how it goes. Um, clean is your friend when you're working with solder. You want all the copper that you could possibly get to to be just shiny. And then you're gonna put flux on it. And uh, the actual soldering process doesn't take very long. It's pretty trivial. Um, I'll, you'll see lots of it by the end of this video. If you go down one size, usually you can just put one inside the other and then let the solder make the bridge between them. I've got this one regged. We're gonna put that here and I gotta put a flare on the end. Two things about flares. First off, never forget to put flare knot on first because you will and then you have to do the flare all over again. And the other thing is I haven't tried this yet, but I've been told this is like the greatest flare tool ever. I'm going to give it a shot. So uh, how a flare tool works is you uh, find the appropriate sized uh, slot and you kind of pinch the copper into it. Okay, so this one says the second one there is quarter inch. And you uh, get it all lined up and then you put your flare tool on there. Back it off, of course. And it looks like this one provides the clamping force. So you get that all lined up. And that puts the clamping force out of the copper and then you just twist this thing in. And this one kind of does a wobble. Well, here comes the proof. It's supposed to make just the best flares that don't leak. And it has a clutch built into it. So when it starts ticking, we know we're there. There we go. So it says that's enough. Back it out. Let's take a look. Fine flare. Looks just fine. And the nut fits over it. I found before, I could have just gotten lucky, but sometimes when I do these, I get, I let too much stick out, but this looks good. Well, let's give that a go.
What I'm cleaning this with is a Scotch-Brite pad. I find it works real well. And sandpaper, I'm always worried about little bits of abrasive coming off and kind of getting into the tubing. And I just don't worry about it as much with the Scotch-Brite because it's kind of bonded on there pretty hard, I guess. This one looks like it's ready for final assembly. So I'm gonna put the flux on right now. Flux is a goo. You put it where you want the solder to go. Don't use too much. Don't let it flow up into the pipe because it, when the solder gets liquid, it tends to follow the, the uh, flux and you, whatever you do, you don't want to get flux deep into these, these tubings. Hmm, that's going to be a problem. I got to open that up a little bit. Always need another tool. Okay. This is quarter. This is the next one down. And this is a neat little tool I found. It, you put it inside of a copper tubing and you give it a little squeeze and turn it around and it flares it out. It kind of makes the fittings that you need for virtually any connection. You can see it goes up to really big stuff. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so what I've done so far, I still need to copper uh, to solder this, but I have the high pressure gas coming out coming around, I get my access port, so I get to put my gauges on and see what's going on pressure-wise. Comes into the water condenser, goes around and around, comes out this side. Again, I have to uh, solder this joint, but comes from here down, and then I build a little elbow going into the fitting into the uh, air condenser. And of course the air condenser is gonna be controlled, cooled with this little fan that I've installed. So we need to come out of here now and make a, a line that can go to the, to the evaporator and then solder it up and this thing is ready to get installed. Just a little more of the same. This little cap back on when I'm done because you really don't want any moisture inside your copper. Partly because it'll corrode and you know that'll be a mess. Uh, all that has to go through this very precise device so we don't want chunks of metal of course but also um, it's really you really important that we get all the moisture out of the inside of the, the air conditioning system. If you have any water in there at all it's going to find itself to going around and around until it gets to the coldest spot, which is that tiny orifice where the gas is sprayed. Uh, in this case, it's called the capillary tube. And then it's going to freeze because it's really cold there. And of course, when it freezes, it plugs it up and then it doesn't work right. So we really, really need to get all the water out. The easiest way to do that is not let any in in the first place. In fact, all of these devices, I'm pulling a cap off this right now, they come pre-capped. Uh, for just that reason. Keep them all nice and clean. My fittings on this condenser are just a little bigger than I would like them to be for this copper. So we can use this tool again. Um, flaring it on the inside also causes it to flare on the outside, of course. So we're just going to stretch it out a little bit and then it'll fit in the hole in the the female end just a little bit nicer. Grab my little camera here. I got everything fluxed up. You can see my work here closer. Uh, so again, the path comes out of the compressor. We're gonna have to solder that joint up around and into the uh, water condenser. Out of the water condenser, solder that joint. Around to the air condenser, solder that up out of the air condenser and then off to the evaporator. This is kind of what I refer to as the sled 
to the part of the system that uh, does all the real work, right? Moves the heat out and uh, compresses things. So, time to solder. <sighs> kind of want to solder this so you guys can see it. But on the other hand, I really don't want to solder it at the dining room table. Hmm, what do I do? Yep, I'm going to take it outside. So, uh, so, well, let me talk it through. All you really need, in my opinion, and this opinions vary, but is a good torch uh, on a propane cylinder. And I'm almost out of propane. I hope, hope I have enough for this project. Professional refrigeration guys use a higher temperature solder, a harder solder, a better solder than I use. Um, this is regular silver plumbing solder, the kind of stuff you would use for like drinkable, potable water. I haven't had trouble with it. It's worked for me just fine. I'm not saying it's the right thing to use, but I'm saying it works. It works for me and it's, I'm sticking with it. Anyway, uh, all you do when you solder is you use your torch and you heat the metal. You're not heating the joint, you're heating the metal until the copper, which conducts heat just really well, gets hot enough to melt the solder that you've got here and it'll suck it into the joint. Now, you just need just enough. If you put too much in and it flows in, it will plug up the tubing because we're only talking about quarter inch tubing. A little uh, uh, lead and silver inside that and it won't pump past it anymore. Uh, also, I have found that it is well worth cleaning the solder. Um, I guess the way I store it or whatever, but it gets corroded. You really want everything clean. And that's the other reason for not bringing your torch to the joint. Because the torch could leave some carbon. You know, the propane is a carbon fuel. And the fuel, if it doesn't burn completely, particularly when it touches the cold copper, it will leave uh, carbon and the carbon won't let the copper take the solder. So you need that flux to have it chemically receptive, but you also need to not contaminate it. So you blast it out here, get it nice and hot, touch, touch, touch. Oh, that's hot, there you go. Now let's see, what else? If you're gonna work around anything meltable, you have to remove the meltable. Now I'm working pretty close to these wire ties and if they don't survive, I'll just put a new wire tie on, no big deal. But let me tell you that inside of here, it's called a Schrader valve and these cannot take heat. Uh, there's a little wrench on many of the caps and you just put the wrench on and unscrew it and you take it right out. The Schrader valve is the same kind of valve that you had in your, like your bicycle tires. And they screw right out, just take it out, get it all working and then screw it right back in. Uh, but I'll be working far enough from this. This one will be fine today. Okay, let me take this out. Uh, let me do some soldering and then we'll get back and try it out. Okay, the soldering is done. Uh, I got it all locked down with wire ties and uh, now we're going to do a little pressure test. So I'm going to hook this up right to my gauges. As I said, that's the advantage of using these um, flare fittings, quarter flares. And we'll just put a little bit of gas in, not enough to generate any liquid in the system. So it's a very small amount of gas and see if it holds pressure. don't hear anything and I don't see anything changing on the needles. Um, I think it's ready to install. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do in the video today is just kind of show you what I did as a daily project. Um, I think this thing is not going to have that leak that the old corroded one had and uh, now I get to put water back on it. We don't run water on it too much here because there's just so much growth uh, this is a very lively bay. Uh, there's mangroves all around and uh, I would be cleaning pre-filters an awful lot. If I did though, I found out from some research uh, that this titanium uh, should be superior to the copper nickel that we used to use. It's um, toxic enough that it keeps growth from growing on the inside surfaces of it. So I'm really looking forward to give this a try once we get moving again. Uh, anyway, it'll also be nice to have refrigeration. While I've had this down, I knew it was going to be an extended period of time because I had parts coming in and stuff. 
a we bought um, like a, a cooler type thing. We did a review on one we used in our camper a while ago, but we bought another one and we, we know more, you know, after buying the first one. Emily's gonna do a video talking about kitchen stuff soon. I'm sure she'll talk about it quite a bit, but what I wanted to say is for very low money now, you can buy these chest freezers that plug into 12 volts that, that really don't cost much and work quite well. Uh, but nothing is as convenient as the built-in uh, refrigeration on Temptress. And uh, we're going to be glad to get back to that. Thanks for joining me in the shop today. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if, you've, if you're watching this part of it, you probably did. But tell me in the comments. Um, I just don't know. Do people want to watch me do a project? Well, this was a project. Bye.